to God be the glory for the things he has done. There is a word from the Lord. Today, I'll call your attention to Proverbs chapter 6. I want to look at verses 20 through 23. Proverbs chapter 6, verses 20 through 23. And for your hearing, I shall be reading from the Christian Standard Bible, the CSB. From the Christian Standard Bible, Proverbs chapter 6, verses 20 through 23 reads, My son, keep your father's command and don't reject your mother's teaching. Always bind them to your heart. Tie them around your neck. When you walk here and there, they will guide you. When you lie down, they will watch over you. When you wake up, they will talk to you. For a command is a lamp. Teaching is a light. And corrective discipline is the way to life. I want to title our talk from this text today with this thought. Receiving the riches of God's wisdom. Receiving the riches of God's wisdom wisdom. Now much of your worry and much of your woes manifest simply that you have a wisdom problem. And it's time for us to make sure that we assess and address that problem and that we know that God has a remedy for that problem. It is difficult in life if every situation finds you stuck on stupid street. If all encounters with friends find you mindless and senseless, we do not have to settle for naivety. We don't have to settle you know, for being uh, non-thinkers. You don't have to be anybody's puppet. And you don't have to be at the mercy of any problem. God has made wisdom available to us. And let me tell you how precious that is. God himself is wisdom. And if God is precious to you, and you see your need for God, then wisdom and your need for wisdom should be just as precious to you. Amen. Now, I, I don't care if you are a child or a senior citizen or anywhere in between. I need to tell you that there are so many things to learn and there's so little time to learn. Our problem is that many of us are satisfied to have stopped learning. And I think when you stop learning, you stop living. You just exist and you just spun. How many of y'all know God wants us to leave? He said, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And so, a word to the wise is sufficient. And since that is true, let's tell the truth and shame the devil. It's very possible and very easy to have the wrong attitude towards God's word. And you see, you can't get God's wisdom out of uh, a Susie Bay book. You got to get it out of God's word. Can I get a witness here? Yeah. Amen. Uh, you can't get it with a Bible under your pillow and your head sleeping on it at night. Amen. You, you got to get in God's word. The Bible 
is not a helpful vitamin for a happy life. That's not what it is. No, the Bible is the foundation for the life of a Jesus follower. And if you're gonna follow him, the word of God has to be the foundation on which you stand. And if you're not standing on his word as your foundation, then you're not standing on Christ as your foundation. How many of y'all know he is a solid rock? Yes. And so is his word. And through his word, God invites us to daily sit at his feet and discover the riches of his wisdom. The riches of his wisdom. You see, if everybody takes everything from you that you have, no matter how wealthy you are, if they just leave you with the wisdom of God, it won't be long before you get it back. Amen. Say amen, somebody. Amen. And that's why you don't have to act a fool over stuff. Because I don't care how much stuff you have that other folk take from you, they can never take more than God gives. The old folk used to say, he's got 10,000 blessings. Yeah. Amen. In one hand, and when those run out, he got 10,000 more. How many of y'all know he never runs out? Yeah. The earth is the Lord. Yeah. Fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. Right. Our text points directly to us and calls for a personal response of obedience. You can't get the wisdom of God and the riches of the wisdom of God if you're not going to obey him. And so even Jesus, according to the book of Hebrews, uh, chapter 5, uh, verse 8 tells us that he learned obedience through the things that he suffered. And that's our problem. We keep bumping our head up against the wall. We keep sticking our thumbs in our eyes. We keep tripping over other folks' stupidity. Why? Because we refuse to learn obedience from the word of God. And as a result, we lack wisdom. I submit to you a love that as intended and obligated in verse 20, oh, that parents would receive and pass down the priceless truths of God's word from one generation to another. And when I, we look at our children, you need to quit pointing your finger at them, talking about how bad they are. You, you follow what I'm saying? Let, let me tell you something. If your children or anybody's children are raising themselves, that's a parental problem. And parents who go for that kind of stuff got a wisdom problem. Can I get a witness here? Amen. Your money stay funny. Your change stay strange. Amen. That's not a shortage of finances problem. That's a wisdom problem. God is wise enough to start you off with a little bit and then inform you that if you be faithful over a few years, yeah, I will. come on, I'll make you ruler over many. If God can't trust you with $5 today, he can't trust you with $5,000 tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. How many of y'all need a few more thousand to roll? <laughs> we must take serious the fact that Proverbs equates wisdom teaching with command and teaching to show that obedience is not a matter of opinion or choice. Obedience is a matter of responsibility or rebellion. Obey, you're being responsible. Disobey, you're being rebellious. Yeah. The metaphors of binding in verse 20, tying and binding in verse 20, one rather, verse 21, depict the tenacity with which wisdom is to be grasped and the central part it plays in every aspect of life. Now get that. Binding and tie. Can y'all say those two words? If we believe Jesus, we must strongly and permanently bind God's word to our hearts like a pacemaker 
is bound to the heart of, of, of a human being. That's what this verse is demonstrating to us. And that is so that we can receive life and wisdom from God. Now, how many of you all think that a person who has a pacemaker in them takes it out at certain times of the day? <laughs> what do you think will happen if they just claw and dig in there, get them a knife and try to cut and just take that thing out? The reason why they got it is because it's essential to life. But the pacemaker is not sitting on the dresser. It's not sitting on the table. It's bound, it's tied to them. And God's word must be bound and tied to you in that fashion. You gotta let God's word become just as significant in your life. We should continually treasure the wisdom we seek and find in God's word and then bind it to ourselves so that it becomes a part of us, a part of who we are, and we live with it daily like a person living with a basement. And you can't microwave this process. Did y'all get that? All right, no. Yeah, yeah, and pacemakers are not microwave. It's not hit this thing and push three seconds and get start, yeah. Yeah. and then, you know, the, the, the pacemaker is even installed. No, no, a lot of tests got to be run. A lot of measurements have to be taken. And then they got to teach you things about how to live and, and, and what to do and what not to do with that pacemaker in you. And some of us just want to do our own thing. You can't microwave this process. Isaiah chapter 55 verses 10 and 11 tells those who consistently spend time fellowshipping in God's word that sometimes God wants to pile up his word and his wisdom in our lives like a snowbank. Not like the falling rain, but like a snowbank. Why? So that at the right moment, the Holy Spirit melt God's truth into our hearts and helps us to find peace that surpasses all understanding. So you need the word of God to act like a rain. Because there's some stuff you need right now. But you also need the word of God piling up like snow. You need to store up something. So that at the right time, amen, it can be melted and become part of you and you'll have it when you need it. It's like putting money in the bank. Amen. Amen. Except some folks spend everything they put in there <laughs> and want to raise hell with the bank because of them overdraft fees. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Therefore, verse 20 says, do not ignore the teaching. Don't ignore this teaching. As seen in James, chapter 1, verses 22 through 25, you must do more than be in the word of God. You must do more than be under the word of God. And you must do more than be around the word of God. You must actively apply God's word to your life to receive all the benefits available to you from God's word. That's what you gotta do. Just what you gotta do. And so the big idea of this message is very simply this. The riches of God's wisdom for the activities of each day is consistently available to you through God's word. I don't care what problem you run into. I don't care what obstacle you face. I don't care what enemy is dogging your tracks. The answer as to what to do and how to deal with it is in, I wish somebody would say it, the word of God. Word of God. You get from the word of God what money came by. Can I get a witness here? Amen. Amen. You get from the word of God. The wisdom of God. And a price tag can't be put on that. Well, What's in it for me if I do that? Well, I'm glad you asked. Because I know human nature. Ask me to do all that. You know, I 
understand where all that is, what's in all that for God, but what's in it for me? Yeah. Yeah. You know, but let me tell you something. God is not selfish. Mm -hmm. Amen. God always knows and always does and always thinks and always provides and do what's best for you. Amen. For the activities of each day. God's word makes available to you, first of all, direction. Mm -hmm. Can somebody shout direction? Direction. Doing what seems right to you. Or going the way you think is right. Is not the same as doing what God is calling you to do. And it's time out for folk that they'll save themselves up and do something. Amen. And do all along, it was their desire, it was their hope, but lied like the Lord told me to do this. Come on, come on. <laughs> God said do this. And then when you get made a fool of, now you hot with God. But then it never dawns on you how many other folk you misled. Are y'all getting what I'm saying? No, no, no. And how many of y'all know that there are some folk that it doesn't matter what's in this book and what God says and how plain it is, they ain't gonna do what, the? what they Mm -hmm. Bible tells us a man's ways are right hmm. in his own time. You know, in his own eyes. And there is a way that seems right to a person, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Brothers and sisters, I'm telling you, there's a difference between what I think is right and what God says is right. What I think is right <laughs> is like thinking you're making progress only to discover that you're walking or driving in circles lost. Y'all get what I'm saying? And, and some of you all have seen dogs just going around chasing their own tail. <laughs> I mean running, running, no matter how crazy how hot it is. They, they just, I mean, they get, they done kicked it in the highest gear. They out there. Never catch up with that. You follow what I'm saying? And let me tell you something. As much as I've traveled, I've had times where I thought I was making good progress, you know, only to find out I was on the wrong road. <laughs> had taken the wrong exit on the highway other than the one I needed to be on. Boy, but I'm getting, I mean, are you talking about 80, 85, and but we're not going to say no more numbers after that. And I, I, I think I'm getting somewhere, and I ain't getting nowhere. Because I'm following this up here. You follow what I'm saying? Uh, back in the day, you know, this, you, uh, with these GPSs, you, you will understand that, that that's what you cut your teeth on. But for me, it was an atlas. And I didn't want to pull over and have to look back at that dog and things, so I, I guessed it. I went with my figure. <laughs> you know, and, and y'all know we do that. And let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I've seen times when I went with the thinking of the GPS and still got lost. All right, all right. You follow what I'm saying? And then after going with the thinking of the GPS and got lost, I went with my own thinking and got even more lost. <laughs> I'm just trying to make sure we understand how important direction is. As promised in verse 22 of our text, you should let God's word guide you. God's word will do what? Yes. It'll guide you during the comings and goings that leisure and labor demand of you. His word will guide you. God, in and through his word, will show us the right way to go in life. He'll show us the right way to go in life. Think of how many people have gone to college four or five years, spent well, up a good chunk change, only yeah. to discover, I don't like doing this. Well, I will do some else. Y'all get what I'm saying? Now you gotta lick that cow over. Oh, right. You know, and so here you go. Mom, Dad, can y'all give me some more money to go? We well, already got your degree, what you talking about? Yeah, but I'm tired of it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 
saying, you tired of that? And my money tied to <laughs> Life is best lived with a clear sense of direction. We need a clear sense of direction. Without direction from the Lord, regardless of how enjoyable and scenic the route is, we're just wandering through life. The best way to avoid getting lost in life is to trust and seek God for direction. Can somebody shout direction again? Direction. So as counseled in Proverbs chapter three, verses five and six, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not rely on your own understanding. Don't put your weight on your thoughts. In all your way, know him. And he will make your path straight. Do life with a vision of where God wants to take you and his word will help you get there. Come on, look at somebody and shout, his word sure will help you get there. Now, I, I know that was bad English show instead of sure, but you get the point. All right. For the activities of each day, God word, God's word make available to, to you, second of all, protection. Can somebody shout protection? protection. Amen. Look, even when you go on the right way and on the right road, danger is lurking. Yeah. Even when the folk you live with are at peace with you and y'all not fighting each other. Danger is lurking in the house. Amen. How I many of y'all know the old folk are right to praise God for guiding them and protecting them from seen and unseen? I heard somebody, somebody had some birthdays like me. I get it. Listen, there are moments in every single day in which we are vulnerable and defenseless. Vulnerable and defenseless. Let me tell you something. I was late for church. I was in it. I had to get there. Boy, let me tell you. But I'm not going to tell you how fast I was driving. Yeah. But I got to a point where that was a curve. I, I didn't know it was deep like that, you know. Uh, and my first mind was, hey, try to straighten that bad boy out, you know. But then when I glimpsed how deep that bad boy was, I couldn't slow, you know, down to the speed I needed to in a split second because me and that curve had met like that. You, you follow what I'm saying? And let me tell you, that thing made my cars spin around. Spin around. Yeah. I mean, I'm going around like that. You follow what I'm saying? That's another reason why I tell you, I know the Lord loves me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And that's why I can tell folks, as long as God got something for me to do and I'm doing it, I ain't worried about dying. Because, yeah. 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 you know, he had to protect me from me. Yeah. Boy, that, I mean, that thing has spent, spent, spent. You know, but I was, I remembered all my defensive stuff. I was cutting against the grain. Well, I was going with the slope. And finally got it slowed down enough. And when I did, you know, I was pointing toward the shoulder. And my bumper was pointing toward the other shoulder. Yeah. Then I did a little, and psh, got that guy. <laughs> I didn't want to hang. <laughs> I didn't slow down. <laughs> But, but I'm trying to tell you, we're vulnerable. I don't care how much you think you know. I don't care how good you think you are. You're still vulnerable. And at times, defenseless. Y'all get what I'm saying? You know, now I realize that if I had been driving like a snail, you know, uh, then that wouldn't have happened with that, with that curve. You follow what I'm saying? No, it wouldn't. But my blood pressure would have went up. <laughs> <laughs> You'll figure that out later on. Yeah. So verse 22 assures you that God's word and wisdom will watch over you. 
I wonder if anybody here is glad that God is watching over you. Yeah. Oh, God. Let me tell you something. I thank God for the old church with his old school singing all night and all day. Angels keep watching over me. You know, uh, that, that, that's right. You follow what I'm saying? He said, watching over me. Went to the valley. I went down to pray. Where? Ended up staying all day. Hey. Just rejoicing over the fact that God through his angels oh, yeah. were watching over me. And I'm trying to tell you, when you got the wisdom of God's word, it's like a security service. It's like a guard service. It's like a sentry pulling guard duty. It's like policemen all around your house. God is protecting you. He's watching over you. And so, in Psalm number 16, verse 7, David declared, I will bless the Lord who counsels me even at night when my thoughts trouble me. And I want to drop this on you. When your thoughts trouble you at night, don't let them keep you up all night. Remind yourself, God is watching over me and go to sleep. He neither slumbers nor sleep. Come on, somebody. And he will preserve, he will protect your going out and your coming in. From this time forth, even forevermore. For the activities of each day, God's word makes available to you uh, not only direction and protection, but third of all, connection. Can somebody shout connection? Amen. Amen. Now, I know a lot of us hate to say that because we connected to some horrible folk. Uh, we connected to some liars and some haters. Come on, y'all. Our picker was broken. We got caught up in some situations with folk that if we hadn't known now, then like we do now, we never would have wanted to meet them. Listen, intimacy with God is the game changer. Don't let folks so disturb you and distress you, amen, that you break intimacy with God. I don't care what's going on in your life, whatever it is, you don't have to like it, but you have the right to allow it to drive you closer to God, to get more intimate with God. God isn't going to tell you in one single moment or in one single day everything you need to know for the rest of your life. He is going to reveal certain things to you when you get close to him. And when you get closer than that to him, he's going to reveal even more things to you. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Yeah. And when you get even closer than that, he got some deep stuff. I mean, he got some wisdom that not only blows your mind, but takes you to the top. Amen. Takes you to the top and makes even your enemies be at peace with you. I want you to know a concerned companion, that's who God is. He's such a concerned companion to you that the word of God says he through his word and wisdom talks to you. He does what? That's what he does. Now at this point I'm reminded about the fellow who was out in the woods further than he'd ever been. Heard the strange noise. Scared him almost to death. He said, oh! The Lord must be calling me to preach. <laughs> Went back to town and showed up at church. Hey, the Lord has called me to preach. Caused so much trouble. Faced so many hardships. To be said, wait a minute. You know, this shouldn't be that I'm doing what the Lord called me to do. They said, you know what I think I'll do? I better go back to where I heard the call. <laughs> so me and the Lord can get together again. You know the song they say, take me back. Uh -huh. So he goes back to that spot. He hears that noise again. 
And instead of running back to town, he does something he didn't do the last time. He got close enough to see what He said, well, I'll be dog. That's a old mule. <laughs> you sent me before, but you ain't sending me no more. <laughs> And I get one witness here. Listen, I'm here today to tell you, you need to make sure you understand you're connected with God. And you don't have to go on suspicions and hunches. You don't even have to operate by your own wisdom because none of that ain't gonna work no way. God, through his word, talks with you. When you open this book, you have opened the mouth of God. And he got it loaded with kisses and riches just for you. Just for you. Listen. God talks to you. And the text tells us he does it in the early hours before dawn and before the family breaks the silence of the morning. Many times when we open this book, we think we're trying to connect with God. We're just trying to do a ritual. You get what I'm saying? Uh, I need to look at a verse today, and we open it up. Oh, Lord, my shepherd. <laughs> that ain't connection. That's not intimacy. Word of God says, in essence, whether it's early in the morning or whatever, you need time alone with God where you and he could be intimate. Does that make any sense? That's what you need. And please understand this. The better we know and understand God's word, the better we will know and understand Jesus. And the deeper we will grow in our relationship with him. And that relationship grows so strong that we learn to faithfully and fully trust the Lord with our needs and with our desires. And yeah, God is interested in your desires too. So like David in Psalm number five, verse three, our testimony should be in the morning, Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I lay my request before you and wait expectantly. Wait expectantly. How many of y'all have been that intimate with the Lord to where you're not ashamed, no matter who's looking and what kind of fun they're making at you because of your predicament. You're not ashamed to say to them, I'm just waiting on Jesus. I'm just waiting. Amen. For the activities of each day, God's word make available to you a full thing, and that is illumination. Illumination. Can somebody shout illumination? Illumination. If you're trying to do life in the dark, beloved, you're in trouble. Trying to do life with your own resources, your own intelligence, and your own wisdom is like doing life for days in a power outage. Mm -hmm. Is there anybody listening to me who has faced a power outage for three or more days? Yeah. I have. Amen. Amen. And you're good to go for that first day. Come on, Pastor. Your adventurism kicks in. Oh, I got this right. We know what to do. You know where all the cameras are and the batteries. You're good to go. You know, had to rub it out. Oh, it wouldn't be that long. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but let me tell you something. When you, when you ride that darkness out for three or four days, that's a whole different story. Or as the old folks say, that's a horse of a different color. And if you've ever had to do that like me, you know the excitement of hearing the brief boom, You know, uh oh, that's the that's refrigerator. <laughs> you know what it is to experience the relief and the joy that comes with being able to say, the lights are back on. God's word and God's wisdom is a lamp and a light to help you see clearly the right and secure path forward and exposes any threats or enemies. 
And when you've gotten lost, you've gotten stuck, you in the dark, you've taken wrong turns, you've left God out of the situation, if you just open this up, yeah. if you just open this up, you can shout, the lights are back on. Yeah. Woo! I'm head over heels in debt. The lights are back on. <laughs> they treat me so bad on that job, giving me all, trying to get me fired. The lights are back on. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. They posted that about me on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> I wish somebody could get it. I wish I was talking to some real folk who knows that we do life in the gray area where hellhounds do dog out tracks. Yes, sir. Where trouble is everywhere. For the activities of each day, God's word makes available to you a fifth thing, and that is correction. Can y'all shout correction? Correction. Now, seldom do you catch me driving slow. <laughs>
Don't see it, Luke. Good. Now you just stand right there. Okay. Uh, at who am I calling? Come in, boy. Stand, stand right there. Good. Now, I want you to get in a three-point stand. <laughs> See, you got a clue what I'm talking about. All right. Little Vincent, would you show her a three-point stand? <laughs> Emmanuel and I know, you don't just happen to know how to do that. Well, and then there are basic fundamentals and techniques that makes it necessary for you to know how to do that if you want to win the game, if you want to do your part. Thank you, y'all can do your seat. Mm -hmm. When you look at the Bible, the Bible is very strong on demonstration. Some folk are going to tell you, what to do. But they don't want to show you how to do it. So let me give you another priceless nugget. nugget. Knowledge is like paint. It does nothing unless it's applied. You got to be able to apply. Now, if I call my wife back up there next time, she won't know how to do no free point. You follow what I'm saying? I let her and Sister Butcher work on it, but they won't get it like the <laughs> Because he's been trained from that from childhood. Yeah, am I right, Reverend Butcher? Coaching matters. And let me tell you something. It's very important that we act on the Word of God. We need to be shown how to put God's Word to work in our lives. Quit guessing at it. You need somebody to show you how. You need a demonstration. And in verse 23 of our text, that is what the word discipline means. In that verse, it means to demonstrate, which has to do with coaching. God's word goes on to show us how to correct wrong, how to live right, and even how to start right if we're serious. Are y'all getting what I'm saying? How to do all of that. So we just watch teams run up and down the court. We just watch players run up and down the field. Boy, that looks like so much fun. I think I can do that. Let me tell you something. There's a whole lot you got to learn if you're going to play organized sport that you didn't learn or know anything about out there playing sandlot or just doing it at the wreck. You got to have basic fundamentals. The Word of God acts in our lives like a coach. Correcting an athlete's poor technique and training him and demonstrating to him or her. Here's how you get it done. How many of you know you got the greatest coach of all time? The Lord himself. And he has given you his perfect playbook. The problem with a lot of teams is not that they don't know what play to run. They haven't disciplined themselves enough to execute properly. Am, am I only something there, Coach Allen? Yes, sir. Does execution matter? It matters everything, pal. It matters. It matters. So let me close this message. And, and what I want to make sure of is that I don't have you shouting. I just want you wise. Because God wants you to be as wise as a serpent, but as harmless. And so David said to the Lord in Psalm 16 and 11, you reveal the path of life to me. In your presence is abundant joy. At your right hand 
are eternal pleasures. Abundant joy, eternal pleasures. All of us are in search of that. All of us desire that. But God is present right here. He manifests his presence and his passion for you right here. He opens up his wisdom and freely gives it to you right here. And James says, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask God. God doesn't pinch off. You follow what I'm saying? It's like a person, amen, got a whole package of gum with seven, eight different packages in there. He said, can you have some gum? They take a stick out and break you off a piece of the stick. God doesn't do it that way. He just pours it out on you. And David's son, pointed out in verse 23 of our text that God's word shows us the most practical way of life. Love, you need wisdom. And most definitely when you want to receive the riches of God's wisdom, Jesus said, I am the way. The truth and the life. Yes. You gotta have Jesus. Yes. You gotta have Jesus. Thank God for knowledge. That's no how. But bless God for wisdom. That's the order of the ability or the skill to apply what you know. Amen. And for many of us, it's not that we don't know something. It's just that we don't know how to really do the right thing with it. And Jesus said, when you want that, I'm the way. I am the way. I am the way. With him, you have the way, not only to peace in the battle, but peace in your heart and peace in your home. With his wisdom, you have the way to aim your life and the life of your children and coming generations in the right direction. You won't get them there by hollering at them and cussing at them and throwing the skillet at them. You got to do more than just hit them on their behind. You got to deposit some stuff in their mind. And let me tell you something else about it. Jesus is not just all wise. He's love. <laughs> He's love. Anybody here know he loves you? Today, you hear his voice. Don't harden your heart. If you've not given him your life, let's get it done. Here's how simple it is. Just repeat after me as genuinely as you can from the depths of your heart. Being fair with you and fair with God. God, I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus. And so doing, I'm dethroning myself from being the ruler of my life and the captain of my destiny. And I'm making the Lord of all Lord in my life. And I believe in my heart that for my sins and the sins of this world, he died. And on the third day, you raised him from the dead. And because I believe him and believe your word, I stand on the promise that I'm now saved. Thank you for welcoming me in your family for making me, adopting me to be your very own child. Yeah. It's just that simple. If you prayed that prayer, truly, congratulations. You've just been born again. And there is a party, there's a celebration going on in your honor in heaven right now. And this body of believers today, we celebrate with you. Come on, bless God.